Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Alex. I'm uh, working for Ubisoft. We're making games, in case uh, you don't know us. Um, so the goal of the talk today is to actually show you some, some tests we did um, in our games. So this is basically, this will be in four parts for, for different things. So uh, first I'll, I'll go over our situation. Um, then some experiments we did in, um, in our game um, game code, a proposal, and then um, some future thoughts. So, um, as a starter, um, I just wanted to show you our situation. So, you can see here in this graph that um, most of the time, I mean, code bases have a tendency to go uh, up not down. So basically, um, this is complexity going up. So um, in terms of production constraints, um, we have somewhere in between 20 and 25 games at the same time. Some of those games will never make it to, um, to the market. So um, this is games at different level of production. Many, many um, lines of code, uh, lots, lots of people uh, working on those titles. So we seeing, we already seeing some of the game production going up to three, 300 programmers. Um, so that's just, just a programming team. So the entire team can go up to a few thousand people all around the world. Um, changes up to 400 a day, um, close to the deadline targets uh, between five and six for each platform, and then we have um, somewhere between four and eight, nine targets, uh, platforms, I mean. Um, so it's mostly game consoles and Windows, of course. Um, typical code workspace, it's pretty huge, and data as well. So this is what, just for one bunch. Um, we also build these games um, several times a day, and the closer we get to the to the deadline, the the more builds we have, uh, and they are pretty big. Uh, for example, Rainbow Six can can be up to 90 gigabytes for the full season, so the full game. So we have to build this several times a, um, a day for each platform. Um, in terms of uh, code size, I mean, in terms of code size, yeah, it's a um, some somewhere between 40 and 50,000 files, 20,000 uh, translation units. And there is some generated code there as well. Um, and we are essentially a Windows company. We are making all the games on Windows uh, using FastBuild uh, and SNDBS a bit. And uh, we are always using Unity builds because we can't do otherwise. Um, so, for example, uh, a game, uh, the editor build, like you, you see over there, it's, uh, it's taking about two hours to build uh, if it's not a Unity build, and about uh, seven minutes if it's an Unity build. So, so we have to bulk all these translation units together. So when I started this project, um, the, um, the typical build for one of the biggest games was about 20 minutes. So it's really huge. So out of this 20 minutes, about 10 minutes was, was the link time with MSVC. And the other eight minutes, it was a compi compilation time distributed. And then we got better machines. And then we started using a LLD. And that was a really, a really huge improvement. Uh, so it's really great. And we started improving LLD also, uh, starting trying to, to actually add multi-threading to, uh, to the curve driver. Um, it's not there in the trunk yet. And then we're switching to Clang as well, so that improves a bit compilation time. And we also use um, um, caching with FastBuild. And even, even with caching, it was, it was still taking a lot of time. So this, this talk is basically about uh, improving the worst, the worst case. Um, I will show you five different experiments we did. So the first one is um, um, 
Clang scan depths, trying to use Clang scan depths inside first build, basically to 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 improve the um, to improve the the, the, um, the caching um, um, the caching case you, you saw just before. So this is the um, the basic fast build cache algorithm, uh, basically for each file that's dirty. Uh, we run it to the preprocessor, then we calculate um, a hash uh, from the preprocessor output. Then we get uh, the file from the object store. And if it's there, we'll just dump it on the disk. And if it's not, we have to rebuild it. So it can be rebuilt locally or remotely. So what we changed there, uh, basically we changed, we switched the, um, the preprocessor with Clang scan depths. Um, so Clank, Clank scan depths um, outputs a dependency file instead. We hash all the files that are referenced by, by the, the, the dependency list. And then this file of dependency, so a file names and hashes, we, we put it back in the pipeline and we compute a hash on that. So the difference here is that it's really two, of, uh, two orders of magnitude faster than what it was before. Uh, so you can see the difference here. We got from four minutes to 35 seconds, and it's still not over there. There's already stuff to, uh, to, to, optimize, to be optimized there. Um, so at the top there, you can see the graph, the graph, the execution graph. So the first part is Clang scan depths running in, uh, inside fast build, along with net the network uh, caching. And on the, on the right side, you see uh, LLD. Uh, this is our version of LLD with uh, some multi-threading there. So um, there's something wrong here. <laughs> like the first, the first thing, this is a profile trace. The first thing there is the lookup for bu bucket buffer form. So this is, the, the lookup function actually takes more time than the decompressing the, decompressing 22 gigabytes from the network. So that's insane. It's completely insane. So I wanted to, to see what's wrong there. Um, so I did another experiment, which is actually running Clang scan depths from, um, by, by itself. So now it takes about 13 seconds. So you can see, you can see um, the lookup function there. It's taking about 11% of the time. Um, that's a lot. So this is another view in Vtune. You can see again the, the lookup function at the top it has the by far the most function, the, the most instructions uh, executed, and the most cycles executed there as well. Um, so what's the problem? The problem is the cache misses. There's a lot of cache misses. So it's basically going to the to the DRAM all the time. This, and, and, and it's also uh, cache mixing on the on the TLB. So that's very expensive. So this is a combination of um, a different things. So one thing is the, that SAD error code on, uh, on Windows is 16 bytes when we're using the MSVC STL. So that's a lot. I wouldn't expect that. I would expect maybe an int at most. I mean, um, the other thing is that you com when you combine that with the error or, um, this is increases the size uh, to uh, 24 bytes, which out of which about seven bytes are completely wasted because of this one bit as a well. So we're trying to uh, to actually just store the uh, store directory entry, which is which is a reference, which it's a pointer. So this should be only eight bytes, but it's 24 bytes. And then it goes to the direct to the string mark entry, which is now 32 bytes um, plus the string contents. This is because the again the um, the first member you see there, the uint 64, uh, it's actually the size of the string, so it's stored before the value, um, and then the buffer that comes after is also padded because of the of the value. Um, so this is all assuming 64 bits ar architecture. So this is the layout of the string map, in case you didn't know. Um, it's just a flat hash table. 
of pointers, and then which is then followed by another hash table, so other hash values for each strain. And each pointer points to um, to another section of memory, which stores the actual count, the value, and the, the actual string. So I think I think the problem is there is, is, is the fact that there is just too much data. Too much data. It's too many indirection all over the place. So you can see it here again. This is the source code. Um, again, you can see the cache message there. Uh, this is another view um, in terms of collisions. And it, it's nice because here you can see that most of the time the value is found on the first on the first hash. On the, and even even when there are collisions, uh, it can be found in the first two or three uh, slots buckets. And uh, on the on the on the right, uh, you you can see um, the cache lines that have been touched by by um, each access. So this is for the one that you, you saw just before for Clang scan depth. Um, I've just taken I, I've taken um, a trace of all use, usages of string map in that case. So I don't have a solution here right now, but um, maybe in some cases we can maybe use a dense map instead, or dense map of um, 128 bits, and the string saver optionally instead of just storing all the time the string. Sometimes it's, it's not used. Um, and I'll show you a bit more after. Um, so the, first, the, the fourth experiment was um, trying to actually opt, um, in, optimize the, um, the linker, the LLD. So this is, um, again, a really, big, a really big target. So at the top is Visual Studio 2019, LLD 9.0, and then LLD with our improvements. Um, some of these are, uh, will be, I mean, we have to push it in the trunk. Um, so another view here, you can see the sections. Um, this is using MSVC, MSVC ob object files. So basically we, we have tried uh, actually, the, 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 the part here, the, the global hash, hashing is actually um, parallelizing the, 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 the type uh, merging, which act, uh, actually is be before the type merging, which is here. And you don't pay this cost when you compile with Clang. It's actually, this is done in the compiler, in Clang, inside Clang. But we are, we're still in, in a transition where uh, we still have to use an SVC in some cases, but we use LLD because it's it's a lot faster. So this is just um, a graph showing the difference with some techniques. Um, the first one at the top of the top of at the top is actually Clang with no G hashing. Uh, this is the the here. This is the Default implementation of ghash with 12 byte buckets. It's actually, it's actually it's a it's a key and a and a 32 bits value. And then we've tried merging these two together, so it's a bit faster. And then with large memory pages, it, it's a bit faster again. So basically, the change there is actually to merge the type index inside the hash. Um, so. Um, the hash there is actually, we know the position in the hash table, so we don't need to use those bytes. And it happens that the type index is also smaller than the size of the table, so we can just use those, mask those bits, and then use them for the, for the index. So it's a bit tricky with, the, with collisions, but uh, it works. So this is the kind of thing we could do also for the string map uh, before. Um, and then um, the big problem we, we saw during the traces is the um, actually the process creation. So it, this is really um, a problem on Windows. Uh, this is what we see when you compile we, we, with Clang. We see um, the first one process, which is actually the first one is uh, the driver, the Clang CL driver, and then underneath uh, we see the, the CC1 driver invocation. 
which actually does the job. And then we look at the timings here. So this is the, the time spent in, in that process. It's spending 93 milliseconds just to run it. It does nothing. Just, just invoke a new process and wait for it. So this, this is the actual used time, the actual cycles. So it's a very costly having this, this first process there. Um, so the change we did is actually quite small. This is was suggested by, uh, by Nico, uh, Nico Weber at some point. And um, uh, basically, it's just going back into main. We, we're not supposed to do that, but we do it, so it's, it's faster. <laughs> Um, yeah, so now we see that, and it's really faster. It's, it's going, it's, we're actually saving about 10 minutes there, and yeah, about five minutes there. Um, so I've, I've tried doing these traces uh, with uh, different builds of Windows because there's a big impact. Um, there have been some known bugs uh, with previous versions of uh, Windows. And um, you can see there in 1903, it's really much better. Just, just upgrading to that version is already giving you a few minutes in terms of uh, improvement. Um, yeah. So the situation, you can see also there that the situation is really um, the difference here. I mean, uh, having that many invocation, process invocation is making the situation worse. So just removing that process is actually improving the build times. Um, so the last, the last thing is actually the, uh, the allocation. Um, again, linking, we've been trying ThinLTO with the Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, so this is running on a 36 core server. Um, so you see that, uh, yeah, it's taking like like 5%, 8% of the time, again, 5%. So it's idle all the time. So what's going on? It's actually allocation. Uh, the heap on Windows is actually uh, thread, thread safe. So there's a lock there. So the more threads you put there, the more time it spends locking. So it gets worse and worse and worse the more corpse you have in your machine. Um, so we want to replace that, but on, uh, on Windows, it's, it's not that easy. This is on Linux, so it's really easy. You can, you can do it dynamically, uh, but on Windows, we can't do that. So we have to actually link with a static version of the CRT and then have a piece, this piece of code. Um, so I've actually used RPC, RPMalloc to replace the allocation because it's really good and uh, we have been using it for a while. There are other allocators that could be used. So this is what on, only, it's only the, the only piece of code that it takes to, uh, to replace the, the CRT. Uh, so again, a really huge improvement, especially, yeah, especially there at the bottom. Oh, I can't use that anymore. Anyway, um, yeah. Um, so this is with the older version of, um, uh, this is using um, the, 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 the value at the, at the bottom here, the three minutes. It's actually using a, a, an old build of Windows. So I'm guessing that upgrading to uh, 1903 will improve that situation a bit. So the proposal, it's more like a proof of concept. So basically, this is the way it works now. Now, right now, so we have fast build. So we have some kind of build system like fast build ninja, or, uh, which actually invocates all these processes. So on the on the on the left side, it's all the processes that are part of the LVM that we own, and, and on the on the other side are all the other processes that are part of MSVC or other um, other tool chains. Uh, so I was just wondering if there's a better way of doing that. So I've created this small application, which is called Bulldozer. Um, so Bulldozer is basically taking all those processes together and uh, actually loading them inside the same application. So they're actually running in the same process space. So we don't have to invoke them. 
Uh, we just create threads and we call that. Um, so this could work in the same way as it works now. Especially, uh, the only difference would be that the, the build system would have to be smart <laughs> to actually send uh, more jobs to be done on the workers. So, um, so this is actually a small change. Uh, you would expect, yeah, you would expect the log library there to, uh, to actually work, but it doesn't. So M MSVC actually says you can't do that. You shouldn't be doing that. So of, co of course we'll do it. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. So uh, what it takes is actually finish the job. I mean, I don't know the, why the anti-kernel gives up. It could go on, but um, so we have to remap, remap the import address table. We have to do some work on the static TLS. Uh, the CRT is quite tricky because it's just one function inside, um, inside the, um, the, I mean the, the library. So that function actually calls your main. So you have to do something to actually call that function, but not exit it. And so it has to block there, so it's a bit tricky. I'll post, I'll post the review so you, you'll be able to see it. Um, so there's a trick there. So once that, that's done, uh, we can just create a pool, a thread pool, and run each, um, uh, run each, each thread with, um, with Clang CL or LD or anything. And you can see it here. Uh, it goes from Buildozer to Clang CL. So you have many threads running. Um, yeah. So it's faster, of course. Yeah. So this is just the first iteration. Um, there is no, no fanciness. There is no file caching. Um, I think that we could, we could lower this value. Um, so this is just a local build. There is no distribution there yet. So the next steps, uh, it's actually, the, the goal there is to remove the OS editor um, by having a cache, caching. So I had a few slides about stats, but um, I haven't had the time to finish it. But yeah, the goal is to actually remove that, uh, remove all those calls, uh, maybe have an object cache, and maybe a bridge between Clang and LLD, I don't know. Uh, so this is uh, equivalent to what SN system was uh, proposing for the program repository. Uh, maybe a remote API. So I've been talking about just building one target, but we have to build many of those um, for each platform. And then we have many platforms. And then this is just one slice of our daily commits. And then there are many branches, and then there is many game productions. So you can see that uh, we need something eventually that will actually scale better. So we can imagine maybe going outside of uh, of just building one target. Um, so that that's the long term dream, I guess. Yeah, you, you can see the numbers here that add up. So it's an open question. Thank you. Uh, hey, I just had a couple of questions. So, in some of the slides, you have a comparison where I can, I can see you. Sorry. Sorry. Is oh, that... he's over there. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, hey. Yeah. Sorry. So in some of the slides, you have a comparison where it's something from LLVM 9, like it's Clang 9 or LLD 9. And then you have like Clang 8 plus patches, presumably because your work is based on Clang 8. Do you mm -hmm. have numbers for like stock Clang 8 just to make sure there weren't any regressions between Clang 8 and Clang 9? No, I don't. Well, it's actually an old, um, this was deployed on, uh, on one of the game productions, so I didn't upgrade. Yeah. Uh, but um, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, and then in your slide where you had the or bulldozer, and you were showing how you can use load library on the exe, on the exe and then like manly patch up the IG and whatnot, which is really fun. But also like <laughs> in the past, I've done hacks where I just I just built like instead of building an exe, I just built a DLL and I just exported main, 
and then I just load library and execute it main. Like, did you try something like that? Is that something yeah, that but, could work in theory? Yeah, that could work, I guess. But uh, the problem here is that we have to actually support that many platforms, and some of the platforms have their own toolchain, their own Clang. Okay. So we can't use our own Clang. So we have somehow started those versions of Clang. Yeah. That's why I started with this uh, model. Yeah. I mean, ideally, uh, we should be a library, but I can't force Sony to actually yeah. release, like, a, to add a DLL to their tool, tool chain. Okay. You know? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Any other questions? Oh. Hi. Um, so I, my, my question was, when you, so you, you, you run main, how, how do you clean up after main? <laughs> uh, you kind of glossed over that. And I mean, Clang doesn't, you know, it leaks memory sort of intentionally. And so you would have to throw away the heap and maybe do some other stuff. I don't know if you want to talk about that. I, I, yeah, there is a flag to actually clean up the memory after, after main, which is actually disabled by default. So I, I'm actually unsure that uh, there was no memory leaks. Uh, so I've actually run everything that... Uh, so it's a bit tricky because I haven't shown um, some of the changes I have to, to do to support all this, like um, making the command line manager thread safe, which is not by default, because we don't assume this kind of scenario. Um, but yeah, most of the changes are really trivial. It's mostly um, uh, thread, making thread local things and yeah, whatnot. But yeah, everything is, uh, I mean, there was no changes in the code. That's what I wanted. I wanted to have like a, a fully um, a fully working Clang, to call Clang, into, to call into main and have it run exactly like it would run on the command line. So yeah, there, there are a, bit, a few backdoors there, like to, to change the, the, current, um, the current directory path. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I've seen that you did a bunch of thin LTO tests. Have you dared going down the full LTO thing to see how badly that hurts your build system? Well, we've tried. Um, we're actually trying Rainbow Six now, right now with the LTO and thin LTO, and the performance is quite equivalent. So there was no point of going into. Uh, so thin and full LTO. are showing up the same on your build system right now. I'm sorry. Thin LTO and full LTO are showing roughly the same performance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we have a really, really complete test, test suite, so we can see quite the same performance, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to clarify something about the last question. When you say 10 LTO and full LTO are showing the same performance, do you mean the performance of the generated code is the same or that like the build time is? The, the, the output. Same? Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Yeah. So we're actually saving time right. when we move from MSVC LTO to Clang, Tin LTO, we're actually saving quite, quite a lot, yeah. Could you say anything more about, or issues you had, if any, of replacing the Microsoft link with LLD? Uh, it was mostly generating the same kind of information in the, into the PDB. So that was fixed. I mean, it's already in the trunk. We don't have any issues anymore. I mean, the only difference is the, the, the quality of the debug information with optimized code, but I think that's known. So quality is it being, being worse with LLD? Uh, what, do, what do you say? Was the, you're saying that the quality of the debug information well, being optimized I'm, is I mean worse? With Clang. When we compile with Clang uh, compared to MSVC, but yeah, it has, hasn't anything to do with uh, LLD. Yeah, because I, I think it'd be at least interesting for us to take a look at. We, we're using Visual Studio 2017, and we'd like, you know, if we can re replace Microsoft Link with the LLD, that would be awesome. So, any other comments on that area? Or it, it just worked? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, let's thank the speaker. Thank you.